Hello all. You should have received this document or have been given access to this document via a link. Um, this is uh, the directions for saving a Canvas course to Commons to back it up for the summer. And then also if you scroll down, creating sandbox courses to be able to work on content over the summer in the courses that go into past enrollment. I wanted to create a quick video to supplement this in case uh, the directions aren't uh, perfectly clear for you. I want to just walk through that process so that you see it in its entirety. So my first step, obviously, and sometimes my screen messes up. That's okay. So I'm going to go to a user dashboard. I'm actually masquerading as a teacher. Thank you, Scott Underwood. I hope I don't mess your course up too bad. What I want to do then is I want to decide to back up my courses. If you have a lot of courses, this isn't absolutely necessary. It's just kind of a peace of mind to make sure that that course is somewhere other than just your um, your version or your instance of Canvas um, to back it up to the cloud. So I'm going to select uh, the communications class. And then what I want to do is go to settings. And I want to go to share to commons. Now, this is a little bit different than it used to be. If I want to share with other people, so if I want people at Woodside, for example, to have access to my course, I would check one of these boxes or a maximum of 10 boxes. If I only want to have it available to myself, then I don't check any boxes. So I'm just going to leave these blank. I do need to put some type of weird description. You don't have to add tags because uh, unless you're sharing it with other people. Um, if it's just for you, then you can leave that blank. It does require you to put in some image. I'll just put that in. It doesn't matter. And then you click share. So if you have a lot of content in that course, it may, as it says, take as long as 30 minutes. Um, because this course was relatively small, it should be available pretty quickly. So I'll go back to my dashboard just so that you can kind of see how I would get to that. Um, your Commons tab is over on the left-hand side, so I would click that. Again, Commons is really awesome if you haven't investigated. You can search for courses, modules, all this different types of content um, from people who make it available publicly or from groups that you have available to you. So anyone at Woodside that would add content to the Canvas Commons and make it available, I could, I could look at all that stuff. Up here, though, is where you share information or um, content, and you can access that. So click Shared, and then there's the course that I just shared. Um, I know it's backed up, and I know that if I need to, I can import all of that content into another course. So when my new course starts next year, if I just want to pull everything else and not make any changes over the summer, uh, I can just import that right into my new course. If, however, you want to make changes to courses over the summer, you need to uh, create a sandbox for that course. A sandbox is just a copy which allows you to play within it. So to do that, you're going to go to Courses and click All Courses. Now, if you're doing this prior to the end of the semester, all of your courses are going to be here, and you can go ahead and make sandboxes of them. But if you uh, forget to do that, or if you don't have time to do that, and it's June 10th, and you want to do a little bit of work, I'm sure you do, on the courses for next year, you're going to scroll down to past enrollments, and you'll need to find that course. Um, when you open the course in past enrollments, you can still see all of the content available to that course. The only problem is that you can't make changes when it's in past enrollments. So that's why we're going to create a copy of this course. So I clicked on the course from past enrollments. This is the one that I want to make some changes to over the summer so that I can import it then later into my new course starting in the fall. So I go to settings. I'm going to click copy this course and in doing that you're copying the entire course. You can pick and choose content to copy as well if you want to do it that way. Uh, I think this is the probably the more prudent route because um, when you decide to import content later you can pick and choose then. Uh, this just makes it easier.
The, a couple caveats, you need to make sure that you have the word sandbox in this course name. Um, you could even go further and say summer 2017 so that you can identify it more easily. But including, and then the course code, it really doesn't matter. I'll just put sandbox.com. Um, including sandbox is important for a couple reasons. One, it helps you identify it and be able to access it more easily in your course listing. Another reason is if you have any problems over the summer, you need someone to help you, you need someone to find that course for you, it makes it much, much easier for us to be able to pull content and help you there. You don't have to worry about start date or end date, just leave that as it is. You want to select all content, I would suggest keeping it on all content and then you create the course. Now, if there is a lot of content that goes on with that course, your pre-processing may take a little bit of time and completion may take a little bit of time, but this was a relatively small um, content loaded course, so it's already done. To access that then, I'm just going to click courses. I'll click all courses. And because it's manually created and it's a sandbox, it goes in my current course listing. It's right there. That's the process. And I hope you have some great professional learning opportunities over the summer.